pre and post workout as far as getting warmed up and then like static stretch afterwards what are your thoughts on I don't believe in any static stretching but I like on squat day I do abs and, and reverse hypers and I squat and bench I bench you know I don't believe on there's no uh, there's it's never been a a, a a paper done to prove that stretching helps performance before you work out I, you, I, do I say don't stretch no stretch but you, stretching needs to be its own workouts and I believe it should be afterwards when you when the muscles are warmed up and what what you're feeling I mean, we always just stretch them right after we did heavy legs. There you go. I'm Not the other way around. And that's what help AJ out, right? By try. doing his hip, He's hip to mobility like type the, stuff. Yeah, like flexibility. Like speed, right. Sports, All that's tremendous. Muscles. Before I leave, yeah. I want you to show me some right. good just hip in there. mobility, you don't see flexibility. Yeah. Wide box squats, low okay. box. So just keep taking an inch out of time. I just had a guy from the Giants call me. He said that, you know, these people just wide stance stuff. He said he did the wide stance box squats. It's actually his ankle, knee, and hip mobility. Like it's never been better. It just told him to take out an inch at a time and work his way down wide. Uh, said it did wonders, guys, fast. Like he just builds more muscle. Like, but there's, yeah. no there's nobody in the world who holds a world squad record in Olympic no. lifts. No. It's not going to work. Uh, you know, I mean, right. they do a squat for specific reasons. It's a great sport, but it's a sport in its own. And I'm not against power training or power snatch, but there's a million other things you can do, too. It takes too long to train those lifts. We do it off our knees. Speed. Right. We do a lot of we do a lot of power cleans off our knees, a lot of jumps off our knees. So it's a multi-year training system, like Olympic cycle, right? Or high school or college is four years. So the Olympic training cycle, four years. I talk about going from 400 to 1,000. Is this hypothetical? No. He did it. At 15, he squatted 400. At 19, he squatted 1,005. He's now squatted 1,200. All right. Um, he's he was the youngest person ever. 20 total of 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. He's a world record holder 308 and a world record holder 275 total and a squatter. Okay, and if you take a 400 pound squatter, and I want you people to ask questions you don't understand this, okay, so this is very, very important. This is why my system would work for him. He could train right beside these big guys, that, or you got a female, train right beside anyone here. If you got a 400 pound squatter, I say you train at 50 to 60 percent with 25 percent band tension at the top. Okay, now let me clarify. I clarified this coach here in the morning. The greatest weightlifters in the world overseas, 50% of the training between 75, 80, and 85%. And three week pendulum weights for speed strength. And that's what you're involved with, explosive speed strength. All right, so I trained at 50, 55, 60 with 25% pay attention. 50, 75 to the top. Uh, 55 is, is uh, okay, see how it goes? And 60 is 85. It's the very same thing they said. I follow what these experts, in one case is 780, and the other was 1,000. So I, I said, well, why, 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 why not do what you do? All right, and so what I've developed is because somewhat overspeed of centuries cause the band shooting you down. In the bottom, you have explosive strength, and it turns into accelerating a speed strength. I kill two birds with one stone. Now, Dr. Siff at Super Training said, I'm the only one that's ever done this. No one's ever figured this out. I mean, I'm just telling you. And but it's, this is my life. My business down there, my life's right here, right. okay? Honest to God, I could give a fuck if you buy anything. I'm serious. But if I can make you stronger, I'm happy. I'm serious. I, I, I'm not lying about this. Okay, now, a 400-pound squatter uh, uh, would train at two, you know, with some band tension, 200, 220, 240, three weight. All right, you go 12 doubles, 12 doubles, 10 doubles. 10 doubles is 240. I mean, okay, 240 times 2 is 480 times 10 is 4,800 pounds. Follow that? Write this. Somebody got a pencil and paper. Write this down. 4,800 pounds. Write that down. 10 doubles. Now, what's the constant? The bar speed for speed strength, if, if you don't know, is uh, uh, enemy, it's, it's 0.8 meters per second, roughly. All right? Now, an 800 pound squatter. Same thing. 12 doubles, 12 doubles, 10 doubles at 50 to 60 with 25% band tension. So 400, 440, 480. 480 times 2 is 96, so it's 9,600 pounds. Twice the volume that a 400 pound squatter has. And what's the key? The bar speed is 0.8 meters per second. That's why it's important to make your kid strong. Like, okay, your, your team's got 400 pound squatters, his team's got six. All right, so, he's, so he trains at three, 330, 360. 360 times 10 doubles is 7,200 pounds. His bar speed is 0.8 meters per second. His 600 squatters go knock your 400 pound lineman squatters in, backwards. This is, it's all, it's math and physics. It goes all the way up um, to any amount of squatting. Like people come in and watch my top guys. They watch them use 700 pounds and 250 pounds of band tension for eight doubles. And they go, uh, 
They'll go, uh, hey, when are you going to do his feet work? I'll go, that was feet work. No, They're not used to seeing someone that can these kind of weights for model sets every minute and a half. I mean, you're just boggled that someone can, like this, boom, boom. Same thing as my girls. About 430 pounds, 35 pounds squatting girls, 121 pounds. Um, they train exactly like the guys that squat 1,200. So you follow that? The sets and reps are always the same, and it's good conditioning. Keep the rest down about a minute. All right, and like I said, for football, if you want, they can get them down to 40. I and live and prove I got tapes that show it. We sell tons of them. And uh, you've seen the tape, explosive power. I have all your tapes. There so. you go. Is that is that football specific? Absolutely. <laughs> it's football specific. I mean, they don't wear it out. <laughs> all right, so see, like a 1,000-pound squatter would do the same thing, 50 to 60. So, so you go for 5, 550, 600. 600, you know, you just add it up. I mean, it, 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 the volume is correct. So you say to yourself, okay, I'm a 500. My kids squat five. How am I going to get them to 550 on max every day? They get stronger in that day. You can't hypothetically say, I want to squat 550, use more weight. Why? Because the bar speed will slow down. You have to train the bar speed at your absolute, what your strength truly is. The absolute, the, on the other day, and also, you notice that's high volume, multiple, you know, 9,600 pound squat show, high volume, moderate intensity. The other day has to crisscross. 72 hours later, set every 72 hours, the workouts can be extreme. So now on max effort, it's it's very low volume. Make the biggest jumps you can break an all-time record, 100% intensity, and you're out of there and do your special exercise. So you see how it goes? High intensity, low intensity, uh, modern, I mean, um, and um, high volume, low volume. They have to crisscross every 72 hours. It's the key. So you're saying every 72 hours you can go high intensity. We, we speed squat on Friday, max effort Monday for squat and dancing. And on, uh, like normally, I'm wondering how they are. We, we, we speed bench on today, and they max effort on Wednesday. We ne you easily recover. You got no problems. Right. And then you live on assistant exercises. Like, you know, like, um, uh, you know, you just take any two guys. You know, you're not, uh, like, whatever you are, you might have weak hamstrings. So when you're done squatting, we'll work on your hams. You might have weak lower back. You go straight to lower back. You might have weak upper back might have weak abs. So what if you, or the weakest muscle trained first, the strongest muscle trained least at the end. The workout's got to be done in 45 minutes or testosterone drops drastically. I know you're not taking drugs or anything. So you want to do that, see? You can actually take a short rest and train again. I mean, to be blunt, training's like sex. You can do it every 45 minutes. Right. You're recovering, you can train again. My guys, like, they'll, they'll, they'll squat in a monolift. Like, I'll go first. Like, I deadlifted before I squatted yesterday. Huh? I'm 65 years old. So I deadlifted, then I squatted. and But normally if I squatted, then I would deadlift real fast, whatever, warming up, again, run a mile. See, so I get a 20-minute break, 25, then I could do my system. I'm fully recovered. I could do as much assistance as I want to do. And the workout, actually, I mean, like 45 minutes is a huge workout. I'm talking guys, you know, that average a 1,000-pound squat. Like your, your kids will work out in 30 minutes without even trying. Then you go do mobility, flexibility, or some kind of drill if you want. And one thing I told Buddy, you know, I watched Buddy, I'm just saying, you know, I was at the Browns, had to go up there two days every two weeks. And I'm watching him take these ball players and run them backwards. This big black guy says, God damn it, buddy, why am I running backwards? I've been running backwards since I was six years old. And I thought to myself, why is he running backwards? You know, you got a million position coaches. You can't make a football player in a weight room. You can only make a more explosive, stronger football player. You're not gonna make a you're not gonna make a tough guy, a puss ain't gonna be a tough guy. And you can't make a tough guy into a puss. The football coaches, that's their job to make a football player. Strength coaches to make them strong. And I and what I see in this country, they've got so much too much conditioning on the strength. Now so sometimes they're afraid to let you do what you do. But we don't have injuries. If you, there's two ways to train. The right way and the wrong way. If you train the right way, they don't get hurt. Okay? Just lots and lots of abs too. Lots of abs, lots of obliques. You don't understand how important obliques are. They're they're everything. No one trains them. I guess I was mystified when these ball players were pulling obliques. I go, how the hell does, how do you pull an oblique? I, I, I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. Well, it helps lock out the hips, right? Well, it helps it, rotation. I, any questions on that, on the, how this works is, is cycling? I got papers on it. And you guys email us. So I'll make sure I'll send you anything you want. What are your, your top to oblique, training. What are your top oblique exercises? I like static. Because me and him wrestling, and you're wrestling, so I don't want to hurt somebody. But, <laughs> Who's big here? Put your thumb in. Push it in. Hard. 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 Push it in. Push it in. See how that works? Yeah. He couldn't even keep it in there. Jeez. 
Now, what about That's the, what about the suitcase deadlift? I'm a big fan of that. Sure, side deadlifts, uh, one arm press. That's real good. I had my tracker do one arm press made a huge difference. Yeah, so. Now, do you, you guys still big fans of the the, the twists, the twist thing, the Russian twist with sure. the yeah, we do all grappler. That. You got to do a million things. You know, if I said there's there's a million dollars underneath that rock, it's yours if you get it. And you go pick that rock up. There's not a million bucks. I'll bet you pick up every freaking rock in this parking lot. Right. That's my theory about training. If I give you a hundred exercises, you might only end up eight of them might work for you, but eight of them work. <laughs> it's your job, you know, to find out which ones. So we do all kind of things. I like lots of leg raises. You now I like to do leg raises with balls, uh, you know, sideways leg raises with balls between my legs like shot putters do. You know, and I realized years ago, um, I used to talk to East Jerome Bob, mechanics expert in the shot put, but also realized I got to thinking. I brought my lower back the second time in '82. I started doing all Soviet stuff. I mean, I'm going, there's something wrong. What do I lack? I didn't know. It was science. Gee, read a book once in a while. I actually started, and I was top 10 at 54 years old in the world. I was, I was top 10 in the world for 30 years, elite for 37. I don't think anyone's ever done that. And, I mean, I broke your patella. I have no biceps. I mean, you, I broke my neck. I broke my upper back. the lower back twice, you know. But it's all science. I started applying science. And what I realized is shot put weighs 16 pounds. That's telling coach this morning. It weighs 16 pounds a day. It weighed it 30 years ago. It's going to weigh it 30 years now. But shot putters try to get stronger and faster. Well, I always try to get stronger. What happened was I got slower. And, you know, if you read, if you read Practice of Science of Strength Training, Stan Sazorski said if you bench 440 and you throw 50 feet and you go up to 550 bench, you might not throw faster. That's true if you don't use the dynamic method during the week. That's why I say... Your, my, your, my 400 pound squatters, their bar speed is no faster than my 1,000 pound squatters. That's why they get stronger and the bar speed stays the same. They're more, they're just as exposed. So that, does that clarify that? They're not the fastest guys in the world. And actually I had one, he went from 1300 to 2000 in about a year and a half. And I trained him, temper, he trained 10% lighter than everyone else in the gym. The key is that bar speed, 0.8. If it's not 0.8, you gotta use less weight. So just keep the weight what at point eight until I can continue That's to get right. faster. Yeah, and listen, I and also in that article or other articles I talk about, if you got a safety squat bar of six hundred, the front squat of five, and the back squat of seven, and you do percents, you got to take the percent off that bar that you're using. Okay, don't take, don't train at 50, 60 percent of a seven hundred back squat when you're front squatting, because all of a sudden you're at 80, 90 percent. Says so use the specialty bars, and I, I believe in specialty bars. Um, AJ Roberts uh, and uh, Dave Hoff both squat 12. They use every freaking bar in the gym. And um, you know, and like for linemen, for instance, they squat and deadlifted most of the time on, month, on max every day. They did a squat exercise and a, or a good morning exercise more than pulls. That, that pushed their squat way up. I mean, AJ just dumped way up in squat, you know. What pushed your squat up on this side? Using different bars. Oh, but yeah. on max every day, at least two thirds of the time was a squat or good morning, only one third was a pull. Yeah, yeah. Because we always pull after speed squatting. You saw the guys in there after they're done, they did speed. That's, that's that's done three quarters of the time. And it's like it should be done immediately. And I never warmed up. I, I put my weight on. I used 345 with those bands. I pulled 715 off that. But I would after I squat, my weight was loaded. I'm all warmed up. I just went in the middle. You know, eight singles, you're done in you know six minutes. You know, I was done. A uh, a 500 pound.